Now it doesn't matter if you've got a DSLR camera, a mirrorless camera, a crop sensor camera, or even a top end medium format camera. The same six principles that I'm going to teach you apply across all camera formats and all camera types. And in under just two hours, you're going to learn those key fundamentals that will make you a much better photographer. So let's take a look at what those six fundamental things are. The six fundamentals to recording an image are number one, light. Now light is all around us. It's what we use to capture our images. Without light, photography would be impossible. Light can be transmitted light, like light that's in the picture directly from the sun, or it can be reflected light bouncing off of your subject. And there are many types of light from hard light to soft light, and we'll be exploring that later in this course. The second thing that we need is a subject, the thing that you're taking a photograph of. Now, the subject also relates to the composition of our picture, how we aesthetically lay out the image and the components in the image for the most pleasing result. And again, it's something else we'll be covering later in this course. The third thing are optics. And optics basically mean camera lenses. Camera lenses control the focal length of the image, the angle of view that we see, and they describe the image based on certain types of optics and focal lengths. The next thing is called the aperture, and the aperture is inside the lens, and it's basically a posh word for a hole inside the lens that opens and closes to control the amount of light that comes through the camera. It also controls something called depth of field that we'll be looking at in detail. The next thing that we need to record a photographic image is time. We need to record the image for a certain period of time and that is controlled by something called the shutter or the shutter speed. So we have varying shutter speeds to record different creative effects, but also controlling the amount of light that comes into the camera. And we use the aperture and the time in balance with each other to get the exposure correct. And finally, number six is the recording medium. That's what we record the image onto. Now, yesterday, yesteryear, that used to be film. But today, the recording medium is a digital sensor that captures the image on the digital sensor and then stores it onto the memory card. Now, everything in photography in recording a photographic image relates to one of or a combination of those six essential requirements. So if you ever become confused by photography, you can always relate and refer back to those six essentials. Now to further help you with this course, we've created this great PDF document with some excellent graphics and further information. Now you don't need that document now, you can download it at the end of this course. So you now know what the six essentials are, and throughout this course, we're going to look at each one in more detail so that you can learn how to apply them to your photography. But first, we also need to know how cameras work and how that relates to the six essentials of recording a photographic image. So next, we need to look at how cameras work in relation to those six essential fundamentals of recording a photographic image. Now, I've got a variety of cameras in front of me. Let's run through those so you can understand some of the basic differences between them. You've probably already noticed that uh, this one looks certainly a lot smaller than some of these uh, further up the range here. So let's talk through that. The first thing with cameras is the recording medium, which is number six on our essentials list, the recording medium size. And in many of these cameras, they have different size recording sensors. So if I take the lens off of that one, and I take the lens off of this one, we'll immediately notice that the actual recording medium, that's the digital sensor at the back there, you can see that this one is smaller than this one. So cameras come in different 
recording sensor sizes, even all the way up to this very large sensor, which is completely de detachable from this medium format camera. And you can see the huge difference in size on those sensors. Now, often those sensor size differences are to do with higher resolution, uh, but they're also to do with image quality, tonal range, the silkiness, and the latitude that's recordable in an image. So we have different sensor sizes. That's the recording medium. Remember, that's item number six on our six essentials. But there are other important factors and differences in some of these cameras. Now, if we take this camera here, this is actually a very old film camera. I think this camera is maybe 25, 30 years old, and I used to shoot with one of these cameras many years ago. You'll notice that it actually looks quite similar to many of the other cameras, and that's because traditionally, cameras haven't really changed significantly other than the sensor has been replaced. So instead of recording on film, we're now recording onto that digital sensor that I've just shown you. The other mechanics, if you like, of cameras to do with recording time, the aperture, the optics, all of those things remain very, very similar. So let's take a look at the six essentials and how they relate to how cameras work. So let's look at number one, light. We need light to record a photographic image light has to hit our subject, which is number two. And then we start to move into cameras because number three is optics. That's the lenses that the light has to pass through. And then it has to go through an aperture. It has to be recorded for a specific amount of time and it's recorded onto the medium, which is the sensor or film. So let's take a look at that on this old film camera. If I take the lens off a moment, and let's just take a look here. So the light passes through the optics, and then inside the lens is an aperture. And I can probably best demonstrate that on this particular lens if I just line this one up and just get the aperture blade settings. Here you can see I'm changing the size of the aperture. So there is a set of aperture blades inside each lens that control the size of the hole to control the amount of light that can get through to be recorded on the medium. So the aperture blades that I'm opening and closing now are controlled on the camera by setting specific settings, and we'll be looking at those in more detail later. Now, after that light has passed through the lens and through the aperture, it strikes this mirror, and the only purpose of this mirror is for the light to hit the mirror, bounce up into the prism, and come out of the viewfinder so you can actually see the image that you're taking. Now in more modern cameras, well I say more modern, but more recently, they've actually done away with the mirror altogether. So you'll notice on this particular camera, there is no mirror. So you can see the mirror on this one, and you can see this one doesn't have a mirror. And the reason is that this one doesn't have a prism, it has an electronic viewfinder. And that basically means it's got a miniature television screen that transmits the image from the sensor to the television screen and to your eye. So rather than seeing real light, you're actually seeing a simulated electronic image. Now on other modern DSLR cameras, such as this Canon or Nikon, they still have the mirror. So we still have cameras with mirrors, as you can see here, and we now also have mirrorless cameras as well. Uh, another interesting mirrorless camera that's become very popular more recently is the camera phone. And the camera phone has actually kind of replaced compact cameras now. Uh, this is a very popular uh, shooting system because it's something that people always have with them. Um, if we look at the larger medium format camera, we'll see that this one also has a mirror inside of it to bounce the light so that you can see the image through the prism. And in this one, I can actually take the prism off. So the light hits the mirror, goes through the viewfinder here, bounces through the prism, and then allows me to see the picture through that prism. It's just that prism is detachable. But there are also now 
medium format cameras that are mirrorless as well. In terms of image quality though, there is no difference really between a mirrorless camera or a DSLR camera. They both, in these cases, have exactly the same size uh, recording sensor. Uh, some of them are different size of uh, megapixels, that's the amount of resolution, and we'll be covering that later, uh, the amount of resolution they can record. Now, um, if we look at the mechanics of the cameras again, let's see what happens with the mirror. So obviously if the mirror is here, the light can't strike the camera's recording medium. So what happens is when you take a picture, the mirror flips up out of the way and allows the light to hit the recording medium or film or the digital sensor. And then when the exposure is finished, the mirror will close. And behind the mirror is a very important feature called the shutter. And the shutter relates to item number five on our essentials, which is time. And that controls how long we're going to record an image or how much time we need. Now to give you an example of that, you can see the shutter here. This is where we would have loaded the film in this camera. And if I take the picture, you see the shutter open and close. I'm just going to wind it on. And how long it opens and closes for is based on the time we designate to the shutter speed. So let's just run through that again. Light hits your subject, reflects off your subject. It then passes through the optics, that's the camera lens, through the aperture. It is then controlled by amount of time, by the shutter opening and closing, and then it is recorded on the photographic medium, whether that's film or a digital sensor. Now those same fundamental principles of light, subject, optics, aperture, time and the recording medium are applicable across all of these cameras regardless of the recording sensor size, regardless of whether they're mirrorless or whether they are mirrored DSLR cameras. The same fundamental principles apply across all cameras and it is those fundamental principles that we're going to be exploring in more depth throughout the rest of this course.